camera one. How are we doing, camera one? Camera two. How are you doing, camera two? Welcome, 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 welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Happy Labor Day to you all. Oh, wow. Shout out to the CIA. What is the CIA? Confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, those feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies out there that help men uh, keep their mind focused on that prize. It's been often said that you can be a high earner. You can become a successful man. You can become a lot of things as a man. But there is a school of thought that says you cannot become a great man. Or it's far more difficult to become a great man without the assistance of a great woman. So a lot of people have an issue with that. But I think like it or not, history bears itself out. Why is that important? Well... Huh. Your godfather has been, uh, I, every morning I wake up, it's like something new. Every day I wake up and it's something new. You know, I by no means came up with the designation of high value. High value has been with us for, for eons. But uh, I think it would be disingenuous to say I did not popularize it. And it's become... A hot button issue as of late. Why? Uh, it's got a lot of people upset. This high value thing has a, let's just be honest, it's got a lot of black people upset. You know, this is not a conversation outside of black America. Outside of black America, people understand that some people are higher value than others. Outside of black America, this is just like a duh, yeah. But in black America, oh my God, this is setting folks off. And uh, one of the things I've noticed is that higher value men, higher value women often have to fight with their hands tied behind their back while your opponents and your critics can just punch and punch and punch and punch. You have to go high when they go low while they can just say whatever. Well, today we're going to talk about why are so many, why are they so mad at high value men? And when I say they, it usually, they usually means black women. Why are black women so mad at high value black men? Why? Why are they so angry at high value black men? Because here's one thing I will tell you. As much as they talk crap about high value black men, and they ain't this and they ain't that. They keep bringing themselves over here Monday through Friday, don't they? They keep showing up. And even when I ban them or block them, they go create accounts just to be over here in the mix. Why is that? Because at the end of the day, high value is and always will be where it's at. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, in order to keep the show going, we got to keep the engagement level over 50%. Right now, it's 1,800 people in here. We only have like, we don't even have 600 likes. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to get the likes up. And if not, we're going to go to the intermission. And you won't like the intermission because I'm going to start giving some real. The intermission sounds like this. If you don't want to hear that entire song play, uh, get the likes up. They are free. They are free. So, let's go ahead and settle into some ambinance. You call it, see, we call it, everybody else calls it ambiance, but over here we call it ambinance, or however that they call it ambinance. Let's set the ambiance and get it right. One of the things that I have noticed with this whole high value conversation is it has brought out the best and the worst in a lot of people. There are folks who consider themselves to be above it all. So hoity-toity. So uh, I'm this and I'm that. And then when it comes to high value, ooh-wee. It's gotten tighter than snake ass and vice grip because, see, 
The notion of high value draws a line. It draws a line, and especially in the black community, we don't like rules, measurements. We don't want nobody telling us nothing. See, black men can say this about the black women, but black men got a lot of the same thing. You don't like nobody telling you nothing. Robert Smith and the guy who drives Uber are supposed to be on the same level, and that's just not true. But today, we're going to talk about it. Let's understand something. How many of you guys went to college? Or at least if you went to high school and were at least a C student, you should understand basic economics. The term value, simply put, is what someone is willing to pay for a thing, a product or a service. That's its value. What somebody is willing to pay for it. And in the real world, not on YouTube, not in your delusional world, not in her delusional world, who determines value? The market determines value. You can put whatever price you want on your products, your services, or you, but when you sit yourself out into a store or onto a corner, or whatever, the market decides. If you went to go sell a car, let's say you had a 1969 Ford Fairlane and you loved that car and you knew every individual thing that happened to it. And it could be kept in mint condition. The market still will tell you it's worth 350 bucks. There was a scene in the movie Trading Places where the Dan Aykroyd character He's trying to go into a pawn shop and pawn a watch in Philadelphia. And he said, well, this watch tells time in Moscow, Berlin, in Stad. This was $12,000, blah, blah, blah. He's like on 36th Street in Pennsylvania. And Philly is worth 50 bucks. Value is determined by the market. We understand these things. But in black America, we decide we don't want those rules to apply to us because I've never heard somebody who is at or above market value complaining about the market. The market determines. And in this case, when it comes to mating and dating, what is the market? The world. And when it comes to heterosexual mating and dating, ladies, the market for women is men. And conversely, when it comes to heterosexual mating and dating, the market for men is women. And herein lies the rub. A lot of, lot of women in general, black women, are really angry at high-value black men because they have a better market position. They have a better market position. These likes need to get up. I'm only going to say it. 30 seconds and we get to, we get the intermission. The mark, see, one of the beautiful things about being high value, let's take uh, your shopping experience at Walmart versus Target. You know those are two different experiences. No matter where you go, Walmart and Target, you don't see photos of people at Target. Target tends to be a better shopping experience. Because of the target, the standards at Target. Walmart, they'll take anybody that a low, low cost leader. You know how this works. Go into Macy's and you will have a different shopping experience than you will at Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus. When you have higher value, you can demand more. And this is why I believe so many black women are really angry or mad at high value black men because they actually have the nerve to demand at or more than they're worth. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. One, high value men, if I've talked about it many times, when people start talking about high value and if they don't talk about these things and they mention my name, they need to shut, they need to just be quiet. 
because I've heard people talk about me, mention my name and talk about high value. And the only thing they talk about is money and the length of time. There are six principles of high value. So if you just hear somebody talk about money and that's it, they don't need to say my name. That's if you know, if we were competing media organizations, you'd be sued for slander. You cannot misrepresent somebody. But in the black community, we just act like, oh, well, whatever. I can I can lie on the dude. I can lie on him. Or I can say it's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all going to learn some hard lessons realizing this social media thing is not a game. You signed a contract with Google. And even if you're not, even if your channel's not monetized, the terms and conditions, you still signed a contract with YouTube to abide by their terms and conditions. And you are going to start to see more channels and more content creators in court being sued for the way they handle other people, other businesses. Let's get into it. Like it or not, money is the fundamental component. And when I was on uh, Donovan Sharp's show the other day, this is the point that screws up so many, so many men because they can't make the money target. Like it or not, it's it's ten thousand dollars a month. You need to have made ten thousand dollars a month for three to five years, five years is when it really starts, but in three years, you're within striking distance. So if you have not made $10,000 a month for three to five years, you're not in the conversation. Well, you can't tell me a guy making seventy or $80,000 ain't high value if he lives in, uh, I can tell you the market says he's not high value. The world does not look at that man as high value. Stop trying to lower it down and understand something. Every time a guy does this, they're trying to lower the standard so they can qualify. Here's the argument that it breaks down for most people who mention my name. Uh, don't listen to him. He don't know what he's talking about. I know better. Listen to me. This is about attention for a lot of people. It's not about being right on the argument. It's about listen to me. I know more. And again, I want to hold and say being right does not mean you win. The smart people often loses. Low value shit. It starts with money. Over a length of time, high value men need to recognize you as part of their group. High value men are like a fraternity, a club. They know their members. They know the guys who will make good members. You have to have a network of other high value, other high value individuals. You don't, if you're a high value man and you got a bunch of low level friends, you're not high value. You just make a lot of money. This is why you see a lot of NFL or NBA or rappers and all this who aren't high value. They make a lot of money for that, for that period of time, but their network is a bunch of lower level folks. Their network is not CEOs, CFOs, industry leaders, movers and shakers. And see the guys who can make the money get ticked off on the network. Because at the end of the day, it has to be linked in level. It has to be visible to where people understand it. And you have to be useful to the group. That means the world, the market. If you got all this money and contacts and connections and you're hoarding it all to yourself, you're not high value. So as we get on into it, why is this a problem? Andre Hatchett, why is this a problem? Why is this a problem, Andre Hatchett? Well, number one, because... For the longest, black women have been told that they're more valuable than black men. Black women for the longest have been have, have been made to think and believe that they're better or smarter or more accomplished or leading the black community. <laughs> no, no, no. Nope. Nope. It's not true. The media will tell you that, but it's not true. Black men had no way to fight back in the media because we didn't own our own media. And the time and the ones that did have it chose to fight a different fight. So you get a lot of black women to say high value black men either don't exist or if they do exist, they're gay or they're with white women. Somebody tell me I'm lying. See, that's how a lot of you get a lot of lower level. That's how you get a lot of black women who have been content with losing. And yeah, let's call it for what it is. You're losing. Your career and your money, if you have financial position, is not making you happy. Because if it was, this wouldn't be a conversation. If you were really happy, you wouldn't have any issue with 
high, high value black men saying a word, you'd be like, well, good for them. Look at the good job, high value black men. Good, do your thing. Now, I'm just happy as can be over here with my dog and my cat or my girlfriend or, uh, you know, <laughs> but you're not happy. And now you're starting to see the rise of high value black men speaking about the things that they want. And what it's really ticking a lot of black women off is they're saying high value black men don't want what you have to offer. Bottom line, high value black men don't want what you have to offer. And see, Laura, Laura, this right here, chick, let me go ahead and help you out, Laura. Um, that won't help. That won't help you on my show. This whole blame the black woman show that that's not going to help you here. Because nobody over here blames anybody. Any and any of you women, you're more than welcome to get up on the show. See, that's not going to help you out over here. Those things that, that you can go see on other platforms, I challenge you to come back. I challenge you to get on the show and defend that point. I'm not blaming anything on black women because honestly, I don't have to. The guys I'm talking about don't worry about blaming you for anything. And see, that's what you're used to dealing with. Women like Cece and Laura are not accustomed to dealing with black men of a certain caliber on a certain level. So they treat all black men the same. And that's what we're going to talk about. Because these black men aren't the ones you know how to deal with. They don't, they don't blame you. They don't have to. They're on about their business and about their life. And they could care less about what you do or why you do it. They don't see you. You're invisible to them. You're not a put you don't have these men as potential boyfriends nor husbands. You don't even have these men probably in your friend group. So when you hear someone like myself come along talking about these men, it's foreign to you. So what do you have to do? You have to relate it back to something you're familiar with. So nice try, but that does not work here. I've had black women on my show left and right, up and down, and you have yet to hear me insult, be rude or harsh. I've had some of the most people who have a completely opposite point of view, and I've talked to them for an hour plus. And I will continue to do it just so I can show you how the difference is, and you can't say that. So here's what we're going to do, though. High value men understand one thing. what they, they want what they want, how they want it, and if you don't give them what they want, they won't do what... Look here, man. I've asked you guys to get the likes up, but now we're going to do it my way. Get them up. Get my likes up. Get my likes up. So if you're used to dating white men, why are you here? Another foolish. If you're used to that, why aren't you with your white men? Here we go. We're going to tackle this too. ahead and say this too for the for the woman that came in who made that last comment about dating here it is i mostly date in a racial lol i acknowledge good black men i'm used to white asian men because of where i live well good then why are you here see what you should really be doing is not talking you have no dog in this fight um because you're not dating black men and that's fine it's your choice but see the difference between high value black men and uh, pretend high value black women 
is high value black men don't use their high value status to beat you down. Far too many black women who will consider themselves higher value use their education, position, income, and status to beat black men, to beat on them. Think your education puts you, make you in a superior position. Black men don't do that. Especially high value black men. They don't have to worry about it. So you don't hear, you, it's far more likely that black women are, uh, when they rise up, they're going to be more likely to talk about, well, I can't find a good black man, so I'll go to a white man and Asian man. But here's the thing. Kudos to you. But we keep score over here in long-term relationships and marriages. If you're not talking about your white husband, your Asian husband, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. So, Here's where we're going to go from here. But thank you for playing. You know, again, again, you got to You got us. You got to You got to spin what you have. That's the issue. See, the reason so many black women are angry with high value black men is because high value black men don't have to explain themselves. See, I'm doing the show, but I get paid to do this. This is part of my media platform and I and I do very well for myself talking about what my clients and the guys who run around these sectors, the guys who are in the top 10 percent or who are gunning to be in the top 10 percent. The men who are out here who have the work ethic, high value mindset, high income skills, ambitious, competitive, willing to network, have a tolerance for risk and get out there and grind. See, they're out there doing the damn thing. And the thing is, when they look around and they're ready to grab a mate to go ahead and get married, secure their legacy, have children, something and so forth, they're not finding a lot of women that look like them that they want. There are plenty of women that look like them, but they don't want them. For various reasons that we can talk about. And see, Here's the thing. Black women will say, well, why don't they want them? Let me let you in on a secret. These men don't have to explain themselves to you. They don't want you because they don't want you. I will tell you why they don't. I will tell you some of the reasons they don't want you. One, you don't pass the fitness test. You're out of shape. If, if 80% are not in shape, if the numbers hold, I do don't, it's not common to see women who are higher up the socioeconomic status who are really in shape. It tends to be the opposite way. When women tend to go up the, the educational or socioeconomic ladder, they tend to also let themselves go. Thinking that they can use their money, career, power, and position to get a mate, and it doesn't work that way. And men who you network with don't feel the need to explain themselves to you. They don't, and here's another thing, they don't feel the need to have to justify to you why they want what they want. They don't have to justify. Well, well, well why don't you want, uh, uh, why don't you want to deal with a black woman of your age, of your socioeconomic status? They don't have to explain it to you and they don't have to justify it. Why? Why? Because for high value men, high value is a business mindset. It's business first. And if you don't understand the business principles around this, you just won't get the argument. And this is what's so funny. So for so many women who are educated and earning so much, you don't seem to understand the underlying business of relationships. And it is not up to your market. Understand something, ladies. Your market is men. And if you want a high value man, your market is high value men. It's not for the market to educate you. It's for you to become smart about your market. I mean, think about this. Imagine if I sold a product or a service and I went out and said, well, tell me how to sell you. Tell me how to get your money. I got this widget. 
Tell me how to sell this to you to get the maximum amount of money out of your pocket. Please tell me all the secrets so I can just, what is that? That would be stupid AF. Why? Because that's not how it works. No, it's up to me to figure out how to sell this widget to you. And a lot of black women are angry with high value black men because one, you don't understand them. And it would be better to say, what's going on, Jay? Jay came in with the double bomb. It will be better to say, is Ike in here? It will be better to say, I don't understand high value black men, nor do I understand how they think or how this works. Teach me how. And that's the thing. It's going to cost you a lot of money, but you got the money. You remember, you got a, you're a PhD. I'm a PhD. You got the money. You're going to have to get out there and understand what it takes. Just like Becky, Becky will go on. Becky will go put in some money to try to get to get her a Brad, and she will put in some money to get Keith and Marcus too. If I actually let the black women in this room know how many non-black women in this chat room right now or in these comment sections looking around for black men, y'all be real. Y'all jaws will get real tight. Cause while y'all in here talking crap about black men. The ones who come in and talk about black men or the women who come in and talk about dating out and doing this. See, there are plenty of, and they call in anyway. Get into it. They don't have to explain themselves. They don't have to justify themselves because for them, they understand business first. It's about a lot of different things and better to say you just don't understand it. But instead of saying this, you automatically default back to the, it's always our fault. Beating up on us, bashing us, blah, blah, taking the victim position instead of the instead of the winning position, saying, all right, this is how do I figure this out? And what happens? Tick, 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 tick. Time goes on. And eventually you go from being 23 to 24 to 25 to 26 to getting into that danger zone. 27 to 35. And then the time is just going. Then you hit that wall. You run face first into the wall at 30 and now you're flustered. You're upset. You're mad because you look around and you got less time ahead of you than you have behind you. You look at all the opportunities you've blown, all the guys that would have been suitable in your lane, but you bypassed them. And now you make more money. You move further up. You expect a man on your income and earning level, but that's not what you qualify for. And you get upset because at the end of the day, you want something that doesn't want you and you don't know why. So what happens? A lot of women, a lot of spinsters get flustered because they know that every high value man that marries a younger woman or, or dates out and gets with a non-black woman is one less for them to get with and they can't figure it out. So it makes them mad. But the thing is, why are you mad at them? That would be like me going to a uh, that would be like me going to a restaurant. That would be like me going to the that would be like me going that would be like me saying today's special is meatloaf. And I and I'm I'm known for chicken. I'm known for chicken. And I open the door and there is a line actually I'm known for chicken and everybody comes for chicken I say, oh, "But today we're serving meatloaf." But then everybody's sitting in the dining room I don't eat meatloaf. And then I come out of the st storming out of the kitchen. What? In the, and if I started yelling at my customers, what is wrong with you guys? This meatloaf is delicious. It's my grandmother's recipe that was, it was passed down from my great grandmother to my grandmother to my mother. This came from the old country and I, we use this and we use that. And I, and I start berating the customers and they're like, but I don't eat red meat. But no, you don't know how good it is. You should try it. If you taste it, you'll want it. No black woman would sit back and say that would be a smart business move to berate your customers because they're not buying what you want to sell them. The better move would be to say, you know what? I misjudged what the market wants. They want chicken. I know they want chicken. I have chicken, but I decided to give them what I, what I wanted to give them. 
Your customers are saying, can you just make us chicken? Yes. You have chicken in the back? Yes. Why don't you put it on there? Well, because it's better for my business if I give you beef. It's better for me to give you meatloaf. See, I got this meat that I bought on sale and I got a good deal. And by profit, if I start giving you all the business reasons why it's better for me to sell you meatloaf, you would look at me like I'm a damn fool. But that is far, what too, far too many black women are trying to do with black men, trying to tell them all the reasons why they should take what you have to offer versus giving black men what they say they want. Fit women who are cooperative. That's it. Fit women who are cooperative and agreeable. It's not rocket surgery. It's not brain science. So when you hear somebody like me talking, you get these women coming up. Oh, <laughs> it's just bang, blame black women. Blame us. Blame us. Bash us. Blash us. Well, okay. All right. Let's just say, all right, you're right, Laura. You're right. So how's, 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 how's that working out for you? I need to talk more like Umar or whoever. Okay. How is that working out for you? How's it working out for you? Cause at the end of the day, the one thing that has not broken, the one thing that has yet to happen, but is poised to happen is black folk on both sides. Just say, forget it. Everybody just start dating whoever. You still got a shot at getting the high value black men that you want, but you're only going to get them if you give them what they want. And what my show has shown more than anything else is far too many black women who claim to want a high value black man have no idea who these men are or what they want. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because that's why a lot of these why a lot of these women are mad. That's why a lot of these women are mad. A lot of these women are upset because at the end of because at the end of the day, they see these brothers. What is a high value man? Do you behind? Be quiet. Go back and go back to the beginning of the broadcast. I'll be I'll be dropping a video in the morning. To explain it for the five millionth time. Because everybody who keeps talking about high value mentioning my name keep getting it wrong. And that shows me that they're if they're mentioning my name, talking about high value, and don't understand what I'm saying. All right. After I drop this video tomorrow, if anybody mentions my name talking about high value and they keep uh misconstruing, I'm gonna just say that they are trying to lie. Because I've explained it multiple times. But tomorrow morning will be the definitive drop to where it should answer any question. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Why are these women so angry? They're angry because they realize this. If they don't get a high value black man, what are the options? They can't get other men. They can't get other men. Can you get other men is the question. All right, fine. These high value black men are this or that. All right. But Brad, Lee, Ahmed, Enrique, they want their own women. And if you believe that only a high value black man will do, then you better be competitive for what he wants. And it's not as simple as saying you'll date out Dating out is not the measure. It's marrying out. And the bottom line is this. Let me go ahead and read this stat for you. Is Obsidian in here? Let me go ahead and read this stat out to you because I'm about to hurt y'all feelings. <clears throat> the book, Coming Apart, the State of White America, 1960 to 2010 by Charles Murray. In it, Murray makes the case that the divorce rate in the upper middle class white America is only 20 percent. While in the working white class, the divorce rate is 70 percent. And it's always been that way. 
black America, white America, the divorce rate in the upper class, the divorce rate decreases the higher up you go. Period, point blank, end of sentence. Now, there are a lot of guys who are going to get their uh, panties in a bunch behind that. Oh, that's not, so what are you saying? A regular guy got to have, I'm, I'm telling you what the stats are. The numbers have always been this, gentlemen. If you want better outcomes, increase your value. What the hell do you think an image consultant does? Self-improvement and personal development. Why? For better outcomes. And for any guy that would sit there and complain about it, go on over there with the women because you sound like children. You want you think that a man who's in the top 1% should have the same outcome possibilities as a guy in the top 5%, as a guy in the top 10%, as a guy in the top 50, and a guy in the bottom 25? You think all those men should have the same equality? Then what you want is you want communism or is it socialism? You don't want equality of opportunity. You want equality of outcomes. And that ain't this world. Higher value, high value men have lower divorce rates and higher, higher retention rates. Well, man, I know a lot of guys. I mean, you see, you see these rich guys getting divorced all the time. Again, you're assuming wealth, you're assuming money equates to high value. The thing that keeps women more than money is the network. Oh, so here's what we're going to get into. Ladies, here's the question for you. Ultimately, is this. There's levels to this. And if you're mad at high-value black men, here's the thing. You're, gonna, you're only going to get more mad because here's the thing. Unlike in my generation and previous generations where men were having children out of wedlock, more and more black men are, are not having babies before marriage. 51% of black men are single and childless. 64% are in the middle class. That means at least 51%. That means at least 64% of those men have an opportunity to become high value men. They have an opportunity to go from being just as poor and disenfranchised as a lot of people to leapfrogging into a whole nother social, another tax bracket and another social class. And once they get there, they are not going to turn around and get Keisha from the block. They are not going to do it. They've had to become too much to do that. And that's where this channel is going to talk about how, you become first generation high value. First generation high value is a choice. And one of the things is controlling your seed, controlling your seed, focusing. Uh, that's another video. So what you're going to do, you're going to start to see more and more black men be, be, move up the socioeconomic ladder. They're not going to be stuck in middle class like my generation and previous generations because they're not going to be saddled with all these kids and all these things. They have an opportunity to get out there, fail, try, fail better, and they'll turn around and mess around and be at 40. And next thing you know, they go from making 30 or 40 or 50 thousand dollars a year to becoming the next the next tech millionaires, the next logistic millionaires, the next blue Henry's, the next blue collar millionaires. Because they'll have opportunity to do what Obsidian used to talk about. Work hard and do the shit jobs. All the time, you're sitting there sleeping on them. Laughing at them because they, they work with their hands. Or drive, or, or drive a truck. Not, op, not realizing this guy has a hustler's mentality and a hard work ethic. And you're sitting there sleeping. And next thing you know, when they, you see him out and about 10 years from now, like, oh, Jesus. I remember when I saw him and... Oh, he, he smelled like work, but he looking kind of good. Now, hey, how you doing? Hey, big head, you remember me? And they'd be like, oh, no, no, uh-uh, mm -mm. no, thank you. Back then, it didn't want me. Now I'm hot all on me. Nope, nope, nope. And you're going to be sitting there 10 years older, 10 years fatter, 10 years more disagreeable. Thinking you're going to get one? Knock it the French toast off. So, um, is Ike, are you in here? Is Ike in here? Ike, 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 Ike. If Ike is in here, raise your hand. Anyway. All right. Well, we're going to do something a little different today. Um, see, high value men, that network piece is really important. 
High value men look for other high value men to network with, do business with. And there's something about high value men that they move on the same kind of energy level, whether they're white collar or blue collar. Doesn't matter. And high value men tend to attract, are drawn together by a, a universal force like that binds, an ele- that binds an atom. See, we didn't skip chemistry class. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's open the call lines. But uh, y'all ready to get to the next song? Let's get into the song. I value men think. Is they're always looking at ways to give back and help people who help them and do things for other people. Generosity. Remember, remember I talk about becoming the bag, bold, ambitious, and generous. Oh, see, y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for that. So, uh, he wasn't here today, but I wanted to actually uh, show that because I thought it was pretty damn dope. I thought it was pretty damn dope. Who are you? All right, here goes the chat room. So if somebody grab Ike and tell him Ike was been a superstar, that was pretty cool, man. Come with the grad, you land, and I can't. I don't. I don't know what the hell he was saying. All I know is I was grooving to that shit. All I know is dun 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 I ain't got skills, man. And see, that's the thing. High value black men, men look to try to give ways to give back and help other men. He didn't ask me to do that. But the brother has talent. Um, who is this? And I said, ladies join. Um uh all right. Well, I don't know why I keep doing this, but who is this? Who are you? T T A J P C. So, dun 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 dun. Why were you timed out? I don't know why you were timed out. I don't know why you were timed out. Um, ladies, join because here's the question: If men can go from First generation high value, go from single mother, born in project, project, born into poverty. If if men can do that, does that mean life is over for you guys? What is it? What is it? And that's the thing. There's so many women who are mad because you've given up. You've given up or you don't know how to get out or how to fix it. But see, you don't fix it by getting mad. You don't fix it by going to these other, these women's channels who just have bash black men or bash men or we don't need no man. You don't fix it by saying you don't need no man. That's the worst thing you can do, in my opinion, ladies. I mean, you can do that, but what's the, what's the end goal? You're going to die alone? You think that may work right now while you're healthy? In your late 30s, 40s, that sounds real good. Well, we do it. These men ain't doing this. We might as well take up the banner. You can't do that. You cannot survive. No. Um, uh, you need to actually show yourself, man. No, no black photos. No. If you're not going to show yourself, you can't be on. Do 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 So Alright, I got pictures, but I don't see people. So I'm gonna ask you to I'm gonna ask you to start your camera. You don't have to get on YouTube, but you will have to become visible. Let me do this. Breakout room. Breakout room. Open all rooms. Do 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 do
uh, uh, uh. Broadcast message to all. You must show, show you. You must get on camera to be on show. That's what it is. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-mm. Yeah. So that's where it is, man. If you want to do what, if you want to have, if you want to have something that approximates having a decent rest of life, what are you going to do about it, ladies? What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to do? All right. So what I will do is I will do this. Um, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close this down right here. And we're going to open the chat. We're going to put this person in. Admit this person. All right. Hi, Io. Uh, chat. Let me go ahead and unmute you, sis. Ask you to unmute yourself. Make sure you're on. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm good, and you? I am well. How are you? I'm good. I'm kind of nervous. That's okay. You're just talking to me. Don't pay attention to YouTube. You and I are just talking. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, let me go ahead. All right, that sounds good. Um, what do you got for me? Let me go ahead and put my, my view up here so you can see me. Okay, so um, basically of the story is I'm 22, and I'm in nursing school. Mm-hmm. I'm in, I graduate next December, and, like, I'm really trying to get serious about, like, dating more high value men and i have met like one person that i would consider high value but i'm not sure of like how to go about it because i'm 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 10 years i'm 12 years younger than him so i'm like trying to figure out what does he want from me like how do i kind of go about it how old is he i mean uh, do you know if he's do you wait first off you got your eye on him mm-hmm. He has his eye on me. He came to he he drove about two hours to come visit me at school. Okay. Um, just yeah, just someone like I I've just like talked to and met. It's not someone like I went and chased down. Okay, I need to be clear. You said that mm-hmm. you're you're in nursing school. Mm-hmm. Mm. We don't do the mm-hmm. We do yes or no. Yes. All right. And how did and he said he he approached you how? Um, via social, social media. To do what? He approached you to date. Yeah. Yes. To just get to to get to know each other. Okay. To what end? Um. See, he wasn't specific on that, and I didn't say anything. I was just trying to well, kind of see, see like, that's how a it problem. plays out. He's thirty four. Approaching a twenty-two mm-hmm. year old, yes, not a, mm-hmm. He's thirty-four. Approaching a twenty-two year old yes. with an undetermined goal—that's not good. Okay. He should know, and, and and see, there's a lot of things wrong with this. One, thirty-four year old man should not be approaching a twenty-two year old woman without a plan. Number one, number two, you should not be trying to figure out how to get on his plan. Where's your dad? Um, me and my dad haven't spoken since I was nine. Okay. Why? Yeah. Um, he was really abusive. To whom? And so, to my mom and to me. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, really me, let me, let me, hold on now. I got to ask some questions here. hmm Abusive to you. See, this abuse. Like physically abusive. Okay. Physically okay. abusive. All right. Yes. So, again... Do respect. I, I don't know. Um, you have any siblings? Yeah, I have a little brother. And is he? Not- I'm the oldest. So, 
Did you mean abusive? I mean, you got a whooping or you got a broken arm? No, it was. It wasn't towards just, it was more like emotionally abusive towards me, but he was physically abusive towards my mom. Is, so okay, ma'am, I gotta, gotta be real with you. Your father's relationship with your mother has nothing to do with your father. He is your father. See, far too many of our women want to throw men away and then wonder why you don't know men. I didn't throw him away. He just I said never talked. We just many of, okay. I said far too, okay, let me, let me make okay. it clear, okay? You got some issues with yes, dad. Sir. I know. So you're not going to fix him on this call and you're not going to act, act as though I don't know what I'm talking about. You need to get this square. You need to get your daddy issues in check before you deal with any men. And when I ask you I've about your father, like... you're telling me about what he uh -huh. did with your mother. And that is not your uh -huh. concern. That was those two grown people. You said he was abusive, and I got to tell you, what I'm expecting to hear is he broke my arm or broke my leg, and we had to be moved into protective custody, and that's not what I hear often from women. What I often hear from women is a, not, a child's point of view on what they saw between two adults, and you don't know. It's all it's coming down to. You don't know. And why is that relevant? Well, daddy issues end up having issues with men in general. Where is your father? I don't know. Like we haven't talked in like 13 years. We haven't talked. Okay. I've, I've, I've wanted to reach out and I, and I've always wanted to like, you know, kind of, I'm not trying to make this into like a daddy issues type of show, you know, but I've tried my best to kind of reach out. But like every time it comes to family, I'm always discouraged by who to actually uh, the women, my mom. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Parental alienation happens so often to women. See, I need you to listen to me. OK. You're growing into your womanhood, right? Mm hmm. Yes. We don't do. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Have you had boyfriends in the past? Yeah, I had one. Are you a virgin? Um, No. All right. So you understand that relationships can be complicated. Yes. You cannot judge your father based upon what you saw at eight years old between him and your mother. And I can almost guarantee your mother has not really told you anything positive or endearing about your father. And when you say you want to reach out to him, it's discouraged. That's all kind of problems. Like it or not, she, he is the man your mother chose to reproduce with once or how many times? Twice? You got your brothers by your father? Just once. My she, my mom got remarried. Is she still married? Yeah, they're still married. All right. And your stepfather said what about your, your dad? My stepdad doesn't really talk about my dad. They don't really, no one really talks about my dad. He, he's just like, he's a kid. He's like, it's almost like he's a ghost. No, the only problem is that's no your father. I don't want really to give a shit about anybody else. That's your father. And you need to understand who you got a whole half of you out there that you don't know. And there's a daddy sized hole in your existence. This is, this happens. So it, it makes sense now. 22, 34. Yeah, no. That's why I say therapy is so necessary to black people. You don't need to be really worrying about relationships until you at least address these issues. And you're not going to I don't want to like say, hmm? I don't want to say like I haven't tried to like kind of address them because I know I, I've always been extremely self-aware of like what's going on with you me mentally. You can't do it by and, yourself. You need to, okay, I got to move on to another call. Let me just tell you this. You're too young. You don't know what's going on. This 34-year-old man, 
you got all these different things going on, ma'am. You need to address your issues, your 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 father issues, your daddy issues with a licensed professional therapist. And you're not going to get any help with your mother because I will tell you this, there are going to be things that have come out that you might be really surprised and shocked to hear that your mother was culpable and your father may not have been as guilty. And it's not healthy to sit back and tell you, you don't need to know your dad. You don't need to know anything about him. That's suspicious AF. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. And we yep, do this goodness. often to our young girls. I mean, let me ask this question. Who are, uh, love, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am well. What do you have for so, me? So, I just wanted to ask more about I know the topic was why are women so mad at high value men? And um, from my observation, I've seen that a lot of people just don't understand the definition of high value, which I see you explain it every time on your show. Mm -hmm. But I think that's really the major issue. People really don't know what high value is and it's just a misunderstood concept. Well, how old are you? I am 25. 25. Do you own a car? Do I own a car? Yes. Yes. All right. Did you purchase that car? Yes. What what make and model is it? It's a Jeep Patriot. A Jeep Patriot. Mm -hmm. Um, It has a value, right? Yes. If you were going to go try to sell it, you could only sell it between... This dollar value and that dollar value. Could you go sell a Jeep Patriot on the market on the market today for a hundred thousand dollars used? No. Because it's not what. It's not worth the same amount. It's not it that valuable. Right. Versus if you decided you wanted to go sell a Bentley of the same year, used, could you get a hundred thousand dollars for it as long as there hadn't been any kind of wrecks or accidents? Yes. We understand value. We do understand value. We don't like to ascribe value to people because it's very cold. It's very real. Um, you ever go into a nightclub before? A nightclub? Yeah, I've been to a club before. Um, you ever see the VIP line where the young pretty girls get in for free? Yes. Have you ever been in that line? Or, I mean, you know, you know that that line. I have. Huh? I have. And then what about the women that weren't in that line? They have the attitudes and they're wondering why they're not getting in as fast. Hold on. Are they, are they really wondering why or do they know why? They probably know. There's no probably. Sure there. There's no probably. <laughs> They know. Okay. Tell me why you get in the VIP for free and they can't. Because we're dressed up. So like when you go out, we're wearing dresses, we wear heels. You could, okay, if you so look like if you look like precious in heels and a dress, could you get in the VIP? <laughs> no. Okay, so let's not play. At 25, I treat, the, I treat you as a grown woman. At 25. And at 25, you understand that you have to be of a certain looks value to get into this place for free. And if you don't, you stand in line and pay with the dudes. Right. So what's not to understand? We get this. It's just harsh. That makes sense. Right. So... Um, do you want to be married? Yes. Okay. Any kid? You want to have children? I do not have children, uh, but... No, no, no. You want to have children? I definitely want Do you want, want to have children. children is a question. 
Yeah. How many? I would say two or three. Okay. Do you want to have to work to pay substantial bills or significant bills after you're pregnant? No. No. Okay. And uh, what part of the country are you in? North, south, east, or west? I'm in the south. Okay. So if you're going to be a stay-at-home wife with three kids, how much money would a man have to make to have a wife stay at home with three kids to support an upper middle class lifestyle. How much would he need to make annually? For North Carolina, I would say anywhere between one fifty and two hundred thousand. What part of North Carolina are you in? I am in like the Gibsonville area. All right. When it's I say, a really when I say upper middle class, what I mean is. Would you want all three of the children to be able to go to college if they wanted to? Yes. Okay. Would you want them to have to take out student loans or would you want to be able to pay for it? I would want to be able to pay for that. All right. So when the kids each turn 16, let's say you have, would you want them to have a car? Yes. Right. And I'm assuming you'd want their car to be clean, safe, reliable transportation. Of course, yes. So you ain't going to get there on no $150,000 a year with a family of five. You're talking about a man who's making $300,000 plus because college for three children. See, a lot of you young ladies don't really seem to understand how much money you're looking for a man to make. Right. Well, I, I'm really thinking about like, when I think of family planning, I look at like mutual funds, different things that you can invest in to prepare for college, not necessarily it coming completely out of pocket. But, so, but, but I definitely, but that's still not something you plan on paying for. You plan on being, you want to be, I'm a sorry, house, I mean, right? you want, and here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm here's the thing. I'm just trying to give, clarity three children having each having a car at 16 in college to raise a child from zero to 18 is two hundred thousand dollars in this country you're talking about tacking on an additional fifty to seventy thousand dollars in college bills a man is going to have to make three hundred plus thousand dollars and i don't think a lot of you ladies get that and i'm not trying and what i'm trying to get you to understand is if you want a man that makes that kind of money, what does he want? What kind of woman does he want? He wants someone who's feminine, definitely. Someone who takes care of their body and who's easy to get along with. Okay. That comes standard. So how tall are you? I am about five, seven, five, seven and a half dress size my dress size is a four okay how much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself my last weigh-in i think i was 170 okay ma'am there is no way on god's green earth you are a dress size four i do this in real life at 170 pounds And why is that important? Well, I mean, I have my, I have them in the closet. I think it just depends no, on where No, ma'am, no, ma'am. Again, them. I'm, uh, again, no offense, but professional image consultant who does this in the real world, five foot seven women, 170 pounds, you weigh more than a man. Well, the last, I will honestly say the last dress that I bought, it was a size four. And that, I got it. Well, that, okay, ma'am. But again, you see what you just did there? I'm 51 years old and a professional in this. And instead of just saying, you're right, this, that, you're going to just, in your nice feminine voice, argue the point. Why? 
I'm really, I'm not arguing. Yeah, you are. But yeah, I'm, you are. You are. You're telling me, well, you're wrong, sir. I, I do have a dress size four. Let's move on. See. Okay. Um, were you raised with mom and dad? Yes. And your mother and father were married? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes, they were married. Are they still married? My father passed away. Okay. All right. Are you looking at YouTube or are you looking at me? I'm looking at you. Okay. Um... Sorry to hear that, but I'm going to tell you that from what I'm hearing, you have a nice demeanor right now, but the man making the kind of money you're talking about making don't want women that are 170 pounds. The average height of an American man is five foot nine and a half. He weighs 168 pounds. Again, you weigh more than a man. And that is going to affect your mating options, your marriage options. Is this the first time you're hearing something like this? No, I've been listening to you for a while. Okay. Um, and I just started burn boot camp like three weeks ago. So um, I know I, I took a long break with this quarantine. I should not have done that, but I'm definitely in the gym every day. At least Monday through Sunday. Okay. But one of the things is we have to be honest is um, black women have to stop. And I just got to say it, ma'am. Black women have to stop lying to themselves about their physical bodies. I know what a dress size four looks like. And I can tell just by... The, the girth of your arms, you're like a 10. And you're too young to be this size. This is why it's gonna be so, um, if, uh, have you ever weighed more than you weigh now? No. All right, well, let me just be honest, man. Um, if I got to just be truthful, you're looking for an elite level man and you're an average woman. And that's not an insult. Average shouldn't be an insult. Okay. Mm -hmm. This whole notion about not working, you will be working. 72% of mothers in this country have to work full or part time. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I've heard you say that before. All right. I honestly, I went to school, so I don't have a problem with working. You went, what to, I'm you went to school? Is, uh, after I, college? The baby. I, you went to college? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And your degree is so in I, what? I mean, I have my degree. It's in social work. Right. So you went to school. Do you have student loan debt? Yes, I do. So what you're telling me is you're willing, you went to school to go into debt to at the end to go to work to when you find a husband, just say, now you pay all that debt. It was useless then. Why go to college and get into all that debt if you're not going to use it? No, that's what I'm saying. I want to use my degree. So my plan is, of course, structured around family planning when I get ready to have a child to just have money saved up so that I'm able to pay that debt off. Because pay that I'm, debt I off with whose money, to, though? With mine. How? Ma'am, social work. You're not balling. You get married get pregnant you don't want to work anymore there's no more money coming in from you how are you going to pay off a debt 
How does that work? I, what I was saying was I wanted to plan for a family. So I'm planning on having money saved before I have the baby so saving that I'm able to pay who, off. Okay, ma'am. Save, save, okay. Again. Saving whose money? Saving my money, Kevin. How much are you making right now? Right now, I make about $2,000 a month. Lady, you're broke. That's $24,000 a year. You have to be living at home with mama or something. Okay, reality check time. You have no plan. And if, and if you do have a plan, it's a bad one. You don't really seem to understand what you're saying doesn't make any sense. And how much is your student loan debt? It's, it's substantial. How much is your student I'm loan debt? About a hundred K. $100,000 in student loan debt to be a social worker? Ain't nobody gonna marry that. So basically what you're saying is you're a 175 pound, 170 pound social worker with a hundred thousand dollars in debt and you expect somebody to marry you and allow you to stay at home and get what? Doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You're gonna save up some money. How are you saving any money? You got it, you, you're living paycheck to paycheck right now. Right? Um. Well, honestly, no. But okay. Are you are you are, are you paying? Do you have? Are you in a? Do you live with somebody? Or you have your own place. I have my own place. How much is your rent? My rent is like seven fifty. How much? Seven fifty. Say again. Seven fifty. Seven hundred and fifty dollars against a two thousand dollar a month income. These numbers don't add up, ma'am. You are living paycheck to so, paycheck. Listen, young lady, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You make $2,000 a month and you got a $750 rent. You're not saving anything. Your plan at best would be, I'm going to hold on until I could find a man who will pay my debts. Because you're not going to be able to afford to pay them with your income. And see, this is why women are mad at high value men because they won't take this. A high value man will come look at your situation and say, well, wait a minute. You weigh as much as a man. You got $100,000 in debt. You have low income skills. You don't want to have to really work. So it's all on me. Now, okay, let's say I decide to take that. What am I going to get? I'm going to, you're going to get a feminine woman. There are feminine women everywhere, ma'am, who are in great shape and lower debt. That's why I try to let you, a lot of black women realize you, you're upset with men that won't take this. And it's because you haven't even sat down and sharpened your own pencil and put pen to paper. It's all, well, fantasy. I will, I, I don't want to just quit work. I want to actually save money. So that means he has to pay the bills. You worked yourself into a pretty bad position. I agree. Well, and the way out of it is to stop digging and stop lying to yourself. Stop saying you were a dress size four when you know you were in a 10 or a 10 plus. Get a second or get a, get a, you need a better job. I don't know what job you're doing, but if it's paying you $2,000 a month, that's $12 an hour. Ma'am, you can make more money at Circle K Quick Trip or Walmart. And a hundred thousand dollars in debt. This is why women need men because 
You shouldn't have even been allowed to get in this position. Okay. I mean, how far, how long ago did your father pass? He passed away when I was 17. So your mother allowed, uh, no, no disrespect to your mother, but she allowed you to get into this debt for a useless degree. So when you say, when women say they don't need men, you need men for things like this. Ration and reason, business. All right. Uh, I hope it works out for you, sis. Thank you. Um, dude, I don't, you say somebody told you you need to get on my show. I really don't talk to men, I will tell you that much. Um, let me get in the chat room. Uh, referred to your channel by a co-worker who told me that you can help me at this point in my life. I'm considered a high value man. I also have a question about my ex told me, uh, well, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, no. Hey, Naomi, you need to actually get on camera. You need to get on camera. Um, I would do this, dude. I'm, I'll give you a, a second or two because you've been here for a second. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Hello, your first name? First name is Frank. Frank, how old are you? 29. Are you watching YouTube? No, I'm not. Uh, you need to close YouTube and all the things in the background. Just have Zoom on, please. Uh, Naomi, okay. Naomi, you will not get on my screen until I can visually ID you. So um, go ahead, Frank. What can I do for you? Okay, Naomi, I'll, I'll give it to you in a second. What's going on, Frank? I usually don't talk to guys. Uh, I did say women only, but go ahead. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much for um, allowing me to talk to you. I work in public accounting. I run my firm, a CPA firm. I'm also a tax attorney. And recently, uh, I broke off with someone else who told me or mentioned something about me uh, dumping her because she felt as though I felt as though I was powerful or I was a high value person. And so I spoke with my coworker and the coworker kind of agreed with hold her. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ike. Ike. You say he's super late. Oh, you missed it. Well, seeing as though Ike is just now getting here. Hold on, man. What's going on, Ike? Man, we've been looking for you. All right. So I'm going to get back to you, uh, Frank. Um, You said somebody, you got to make it quick, man. Uh, Naomi, you're next. You got, Frank, go ahead. What's the, what's the, what's the question I need to answer for you? Uh, my question is, what makes someone a high-value person? I broke off with my ex maybe a month or two ago, and she was telling me that I dumped her because I felt as though I was powerful. Or you I dumped your ex? A high value. You dumped your Yeah, yeah. You dumped your ex. How old is she? Uh, 32. Yeah, uh, bro, uh, that's too long ago. I, I don't know what you're getting at. You, she, she said you dumped her because you felt you were a high value man, right? She felt as though, yeah. All right, but here's the, the net net of it. You're 29, she's 32, and there's far too much for me to dig into. If you really want my assistance, man, book a session. That's really what I can tell you. It's not even what this show is about. You're completely <laughs> off the topic. Okay. Thank you. Cool. You own your own business. You can afford it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, later. Naomi, go ahead and take off the get on the camera. Naomi, 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 the camera's dark. So, um uh I will say this though. Um that's all, that sounds all kind of messed up. A woman said you dumped him. A woman, he was on there for thirty plus minutes. Uh, why is your why is your face covered? 
You got a mask on. That's not how this works. If you want to talk to me, you're going to talk to me. Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Why do you Hello? have a mask on? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, here, I'll take it off. What's going on? Um, all right. So my friend actually linked me this video. This is my first time. Uh, how old are you? Across your channel. How old are you? I'm um, 24. <laughs> All right. I'm 24. Um, so, yeah, I came up. Um, well, he sent me the video, so I subscribed, and um, we thought it would be fun to ask a question uh, no. about value. Um, so, the question. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm curious to hear what your. Uh, where you would think I would stand on like the value scale for a woman? Oh, uh, that's not what this is about. Oh, okay. Um, okay. who's your friend? And they, your friend referred you to me. Oh no, my friend just sent me the link to your video. Okay, was it a man or a woman? It was a man. Okay. Uh, have you been watching my show? Uh, no, but I have been on here for this video. Uh -huh. um, um, I don't know why he would send it to you, but I got to Well, I'll, I'll, okay. Uh, is are you dating this guy? Um, we're talking. We're friends, but we're, friends. we're not uh, together. So. Do you have any children? Yeah. No. Do you want to get married in the future? Um, I don't really have. Uh, I mean, it would be nice, but I don't really. You're twenty four. Marriage like that? Yeah. Did you go to college? Yes. Where'd you go to school? Um, I don't want to say specifically for privacy reasons, but um, well, then you're on my show. I don't really. I mean, man, look, you can. I don't. Oh, nobody okay, gives okay. a shit. Nobody's gonna track you. Down. <laughs> Make that important. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'm from. I'm in California. I went to school. It's a state school. All right. So I mean. In general, you're asking about value, and at 24, you seem very girly. Are you normally so um, bubbly? Um, because you came on the show, you didn't want to show your face. You got a mask on, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you're 24, and I'm, I'm expecting to talk to a woman, and I feel like I'm talking to a teenage girl. Oh, okay. Well, that's just that's just my personality. I get it, but you still. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. But I'm not that way all the time. Well, but, but you're on a show yeah. with four thousand people, and I'm just trying. And you got you asked me a question, so I'm trying to understand who it is. Um, bottom line is, if you don't know you want to be married or not, you're just kind of out here living life, right? No, I'm not out here. I'm not out here. I mean, ideally, I've always seen myself with just one person. Well, I just asked you a simple question. In the future, would you like to be married? That's either yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not Simple what you said. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, it's kind of. It, I don't really think about it like that. So, but, but if that's I had the, to answer but yes, that's the no, point. But see, yes. that's the point. You don't really think about it like okay. that. And these are the years you should be thinking about this heavily because. Okay. Because time is wasting. Mm -hmm. And at twenty four, I said you're just kind of out here. So you made my point. You're not thinking about it. Okay. So I hope you're not sexually active. Uh, uh -oh. and because accidents do happen. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, is your dad in your life? Yes. He is. All right. Well, um, I don't know what else. I, um, okay. are you actually? Do you okay. do? Do you, are you act? Are you actively? Are you working? Or are you still in school? I'm on job searching right now, but exactly. um, I graduated college. There you go. So. so, and you're living with who? I live with my dad. There you go. You're a little girl. No offense, but this is what I mean. You're not serious. I'm not talking to a 24-year-old. I'm talking to a young, I mean, I'm talking to a 24-year-old college girl who has no job, living with dad. No plans for the future. You're just out here 24 and Oh, I have lots of plans. But for but my you future. have but you're not doing anything. It, you can have lots of dreams, but plans require action. Oh no, I'm doing stuff. I have I do have plans. Yeah. Again, this is the position we put a lot of our women in. We just life is not serious for a lot of a lot of black women. They're just out here. And you're wasting time.
I'll let you unmute, but you can't talk over me. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. What do you plan on doing with yourself as far as working? Um, so I majored in computer science. So Good. my plan is to get a my plan is to get a software engineering job. And what age did you graduate? Um, uh, twenty-two. Right. So it's so been, I've been two. Out for two. You've been out of work for two years. Um, well, I wouldn't say out of no, work. No, no, ma'am. I, I have another career. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. You've been graduated for, since twenty-two, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Have you been gainfully employed? If we're talking about. No, no, ma'am. I, oh, I, I, let me be real clear. I don't play games. I know what employment is. I'm background is in engineering. I'm not. It's not a toy over here. Okay. You, have you had a job? Have you had a job the last two years? Um, no. No. Then how do you? Not how do you? Job. Then what? Do you, then how do you eat? Um, I have a savings, but I have savings from a what? Where, path. Saving savings from what? Where have you had a um, job? Well, I have worked when I was in college. I um, helped with the family business. You helped with the family help. business. That I wasn't separate... that wasn't a job, ma'am. They found a way to give you money. But I actually work. Okay, but you work um, for the family also, business. Okay, see. <laughs> Ooh. All right. I see why he told you to call now. Oh, sorry. I see why he told you to call. Um, let me help. Let me help you. Let me. I see why he told you to call. Okay. That shit you could pull with daddy. That talkative little uh, stamp you for daddy's girl, it don't work in the real world. Well, of course, I know. And, and, well, apparently not, because I've had to mute you twice on this show. You, you graduated 22 in California. See, adults have to go to work to pay for their housing, their food, and all the other kind of stuff. Children get to go back home and live it with daddy and pretend to be have dreams and things for two years. COVID didn't do it. And you're you're saying you, you live it off of savings where you work for the family business, meaning that's another way. Whether you worked or not is irrelevant. The fact of on the open market, why are you not working to take care of yourself and pay for anything? Am I still muted? Okay. Yeah, why aren't you why aren't you out working like the rest of the people in the world? Oh, that's my plan, but um, your plan. Okay, when is exactly it supposed to start? When is it supposed to start? Oh, now, now I actually have interviews coming up. But why hasn't week. it happened in the last two years? Because I said previously I have a more entrepreneurial mindset. What do you mean um, entrepreneurial? So, I was, that's I've a, been that's a, so see, ma'am, entrepreneurial meant what? Mm -hmm. How would you take any money oh, to run doesn't... a business? Um, well, what I'm doing doesn't require like a huge investment. See, I mean, see, what, it, what you're I mean, hearing, folks, is if this were a man, we'd call her a loser. We call this kind of stuff loser. <laughs> this is a female loser. This is Hello? A, if this were a man, we'd call her a loser. We'd call this person a loser. I got entrepreneurial plans and this and that. And I work for the family business. You're not doing anything. You're daddy's girl, and that's cool. And maybe you'll make somebody a good, uh, well, this is problematic. Um, I hope the person that gave you this link is not a guy you're dating because he gave it to you for a reason because mm -hmm. you're kind of cute, mm -hmm. but it seems as though you're going to be a hell of a lot more problems than anything else because you can pull shit with daddy that you can't pull with men. The real world expects. Yeah, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying, but um, the this idea of just being a cute daddy girl, I mean, that's not really accurate. There's a lot of context missing. Um, but I understand what you're saying. So like the, generally, the problem the is you went to school to go, you went to school to get a degree. Everybody else who did, and it was, and you're supposed mm -hmm. to go to work after that, not not do entrepreneurial well, stuff actually, for two years. Uh, Okay. Well, some people, I mean, I don't want to say some people, but um, in some cases, people do take like a gap year or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But pursue. again, but the only reason you can have a gap year is because daddy's paying for it. He's not paying for anything. Um, you work for the family business. 
Whose business, who did you work for? It was, uh, I don't want to give specifics. I don't give a, no, no, no. See, of course you don't want to. See, this is another reason why it can't be high value, no visibility. See, when it's ever, when it's ever, I don't want to. Did you work for a family business, yes or no? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And why not go work outside the family business? Because that was when I was in college, but right. um, when I graduated, I decided to. Go ahead. You decided to what? Sorry. Yeah, when when I got out of college, I decided, okay, um, am I going to get a job right away? I could have easily done that. Um, it's not that I, I can't. I literally had professors tell me, you're very intelligent. Like, I know you're not going to have a problem getting a job. Um, so um, I decided to just take some time and really own it on my craft. And now it's time for me to go get, <laughs> you know, like, I, I understand that, um, the importance of, working and stuff and being able to support yourself. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, what I said stands. You're living in a fantasy world. And this happens a lot to our black women in California. I don't know what's going on in California on the West Coast where we make women think you can just pretend. Look, ma'am, at 22 after college, I don't begrudge you for working in the family business. It's good to have a family business that you can work in. But that does not give you a taste of the real world. Professors telling you you're intelligent does not give you a taste of the real world. Have you ever lived on your own? No. Yes or no? Uh, I, spoke. I said no. No. So you are still effectively the same emotional maturity as you were in high school that's why i felt like i'm talking to a teenager you have not gone out and paid your way in the world you have a degree you're not using it and the only reason you could sit back and do that is because somebody else was paying for your grown ass your grown self to find and figure it out fine but um, but I, I I'll let you talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will say this. Uh, marriage sounds like a great bet for you because you don't sound like you have the mindset or the desire to get out mm -hmm. here and be a career woman, which is fine. Oh, I definitely. Let me go ahead and help you. Witness the birth of an eternal seven. The birth of an eternal seven. Why is that allowed to happen? Well, to her father's credit or family's credit, they know we cannot send this bobblehead out onto the planet. She will not do well on her own. Keep her close to home. She's not ready for the world. And that's smart. See, honestly, it will be far better for somebody in that mindset to go from dad to an older man who's a, a older husband. And he just, yeah, come on, come over. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll start to your own, your, your own, uh, your own consulting firm. Yeah, right, yeah. You just squirt me out three kids and you just sit over there. Yeah, this... Yeah, you're yeah, you're brilliant. That's right. Yeah, you're the next Einstein. Just just go give me a sandwich. I mean that. Look, man, that's not a bad path because I would rather. Here's a question: Would we rather her be at daddy's home, being kind of emotionally immature, or would we rather her be out here becoming a hard scrabbled worker and riding the CC? I mean, I try to look for a silver lining as much as possible. At least guys understand she's not out there becoming hardened. She's hard-headed, but, but it's not even really hard-headed. That's that I'm a daddy's girl. <laughs> and that shit, that's why I said that's not going to work. Um, 
especially not with somebody um, around her own age. OnlyFans, nah, she ain't that cute. She's cute-ish, but not that cute. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Who gonna listen to that? I know. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to have a talk about this whole thing about later on this week. I may actually do a show every day this week because we've had a short week. This whole notion about women talking about they want to build with men. I want a man I can build with. I want to build. I want to be. How many times we need to talk about this fantasy building you guys have in your mind? What are you going to build? You want to build what? Build with other people's money? Well, what you want to do is play. You want to play. You don't want to build. That's why a lot of high value men give their wives the ability to start their own business and their own side projects so they can just stay out of the way. Because the women, you're not supposed to be the builders. Another thing, when I hear you've heard this thing about abuse, when you talk about ask a woman why you're not no longer with your man, what are the reasons that come up? Infidelity or abuse? Two things you're not supposed to talk about. Well, I think it's time we start talking about it. This abuse thing is used very broadly. Now, I'm just going to say this. From anecdotally, I don't see a lot of women walk around with black eyes and broken arms and jacked up. I don't see that. I've never seen the world. I mean, I'm not going to downplay the fact that there are some women that get out there and get horrific abuse. But I think it's far, I think in modern times, it is far over. I think it's far overreported. I think more women say it than happens. Who's more abusive? Are men more physically abusive or are women more verbally and emotionally abusive? See, we don't talk about it the other way. I don't see a lot of men. As a matter of fact, I see women who are, it's far more likely to see women. How are you all of a sudden say all these abused women? And when you, when a woman's quick to jump and start yelling and snapping at men, these women, a lot of these women talk about abuse, but they, they don't act like they've had nobody uh, knocking the furniture out their mouth. I haven't seen this. I don't get it. This Some is mental abuse, but who's the, who, who does the, who are, who's more abusive? See, abuse is something you're not supposed to ask. If you say, well, why'd you leave your man, girl? He got, all of a sudden, these men, I mean, just go look at my show. All of a sudden, you were with a guy for two or three years, and all of a sudden, he became abusive. Really? The end of the day, a lot of women are angry with high-value men because they can't keep them. Some of these women can deal with high value men, but they cannot keep them. You cannot keep them. So a woman, a woman's rated on her ability to keep a man. Oh, let's talk about it. A woman is rated on her ability to keep a man. So if you're a woman who does not have a husband, does not have a long-term boyfriend or relationship and has no history of keeping a man, what does that say about your overall value? I didn't make the rules, ladies. But it is far more detrimental to a woman to be for on her, on her overall value in the way society looks at a woman who's unattached. Because a man... Because see, here's the thing. Ultimately, people know you can give it away. I mean, why can't you keep a man? Why can't you keep him around? See, I don't know how I'm going to touch this subject of abuse, and I, I don't even if I want to because it's too much of a hot button. And one of those things, you know, even if you talk about it, it could get misconstrued. You know, I just personally... I've seen far, I've seen more opposite. I've seen more women who are just verbally abusive to men and just, you know, these new, I mean, women are just, women have no problem talking about, them. look in the subway when they do with the eight ball jacket, you got three women just smashing people's phones and talking crap and carrying on. 
If men were as, as abusive as some women say, you wouldn't have that happening. So, these women can't cut a sandwich. <laughs> Financial abuse. So at the end of the day, what are you going to do? And a lot of, especially older black women, are angry with high or mad at high value black men because they actually have the nerve to start talking. See, if if, if men weren't going to say anything, if they were just going to keep it quiet, but men are tired of being the scapegoats and telling the world, well, the reason I ain't married is because these men ain't worthy. No. you. I've actually heard this on YouTube Asking asking women in general, black women in particular, why don't you have a man? Why don't you have a husband? It's men's fault. I actually heard women say this. I don't have a man, said this woman, and it's the men's fault. Wow. Really? You don't have a man, but it's the men's fault. Okay. You mean got to change what you exactly. So I would say as far as millennials and zennials, they're not taking the these crazy deals. And ladies, if you're if you're twenty one to forty, uh my suggestion if you're twenty one to twenty seven you better start act, moving like the world's on fire because no one can really tell you, but I'm going to tell you, once you hit 27, once you hit Danger Zone, the, the, the music starts to slow down and stop. And these guys are not taking this BS. Don't let yourself get over 30 years old thinking you're going to get out of here and find a husband. Your chances of marriage drop substantially. And the whole notion of, well, not every woman wants to be married. That's bull. That is bull. You want to be married. You just don't know how to do it. No, women don't run around here talking about, I want to be single and a spinster for the rest of my life. No children. That's not in your, that's not in your, it's not in the typical woman's uh, makeup. So what ends up happening? In your early years, you say the men ain't crap. They dusty, busty, crusty, whatever. Then in your late to mid thirties, it starts to level out in 40. These men are ready for prime time and you wasted your time not submitting or getting. Yes. Submitting and getting with a man in your early twenties, getting the best man you could get and just getting off the board. You waited too long. You waited too long. Thought you could find a better deal and now you're stuck. You're in your late 30s, you're 36 plus in no man's land and no prospects. What are you going to do? How do you fix it? How do you do something about that? Because you don't have to, it doesn't have to end right there, but you got to recognize the fact for what it is. You got to stop digging. And the first thing is, I say to a lot of sisters, you got to stop lying about your weight. I'm a size four. You know how many women have called in and said they're a size four? And I can see you. I can see the thickness of your arms, the, the broadness of your shoulders. You know, I, and we'll sit there and argue like, down like, you too big. And see, two things any woman can can control. You can control your your weight and your attitude. High value man or no. So what are you willing to do? That's the thing. What are you willing to do to get what it is you say you want? What are you willing to do to get it? Now, here's the funny thing. I got U.S. Michael Harrell. I got women are telling me, you stupid, you trash, you don't know nothing, you don't know this, you don't know that, da, da, da. But every day I get somebody, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any problems with men. 
ladies, I'm not your enemy. Black men aren't your enemy. Men aren't your enemy. The truth is not your enemy. The truth is not your enemy. The truth is neutral. Facts are neutral. And it's not my goal or intent to sit here and I'll put it to you. You can think what you want to. You can listen with your feelings. But it is better to know the truth and know where you stand and then decide what you're going to do about it. That's the question. Forget me. Forget the message of high value and this and that. Forget all that. What is the truth of your existence? And then what are you willing to do about it? That's really what it comes down to for a lot of people. Moving like the world's on fire. Sarah, that's true. Because women have a, have a clock. Women have a clock. And then when you get women like Lizzo talk about they want athletic men, they want men of a certain kind. Ladies, the best thing you can do to make sure you have a better chance of having any man is be fit, feminine, and friendly. Fit, feminine, and friendly gives you the best shot to get with anybody. That high value man, that ten percent man, knock it off. If you are not an eight, nine, or ten in the body, and a, an adjustable six, eight or nine in the face, right out of the shower, no makeup. No hair extensions, uh, just straight out, just straight natural. If you're not there, you're not going to get a high value man. That's it. High value men aren't in your vocabulary. I know many, let me go ahead, Donna. I know many men, I know many of my brothers that have been hit and their cars and things have been destroyed. By women and women are very abusive guys. Yeah, man, you know the the reason a lot of the, a lot of women can be abusive, man, is because the world doesn't hold women accountable. You know, a female police officer walked in and shot a man, and and the judge hugged her. The judge hugged her, and um, you know that's why you know you're starting to see a lot of women who aren't claiming to be feminist. Because they realize this feminist stuff is starting to look bad on them. But it doesn't matter if you claim it or not. If you're still walking around here with this combative attitude with men, where in your life are you getting along with men? Where in your life are you getting along with men? Um, the fall is, I love the fall. The fall, you're going to see me in the drone. The drone, I'm going to call it junior. You're going to see me in the drone. We're going to be out and about because in the summer it's too hot. But in the fall... Where are you getting along with men? Where do you go and interact with men when you're having a decent time? Where people are happy to see you coming? Or are you just sitting around angry all the time? And uh, the notion that, you know, high value black men don't want black women. <laughs> we got to get on that one too. Is it the only question you got to ask yourself is my opinion, ladies, is you only need one. Forget what all the stats and all the naysayers are telling you. You need one. Instead of being mad, instead of saying it's not fair, instead of saying it's not right, what are you going to do to get the one you need? One and done. Your goal needs to, if you were asking me, your goal should be to, I just need to get it together, get my one and get out the game. That's it. I just need to get my one and I'm gone. Not try to fix it for everybody else. When I had, uh, what's her name on my show? I'm here for all women. You need to be here for yourself. Be here for yourself. One and done. Lizzo is beautiful. Ty Love, are you, are you, what are you, are you serious? This woman says, this woman is beautiful. How are you ranking beauty? Ooh. 
ladies, you will be on a better path if you start hanging in more, talking to more men, listening to more men. And uh, if you're going into spaces with women who are telling you things to soothe your feelings and telling you what you want to hear, it may, it's, that's comfort knowledge. Like comfort food, but that's like comfort food is generally junk food. Junk food is bad for your body. Junk food, comfort, uh, comfort knowledge is bad for your brain. It's not going to help you get anywhere. So you end up sitting around talking about uh, listening to all these women empowerment, this and that. Uh, it, do, these women going back to their husband. Ask yourself a question. Ladies, seriously. Do I have any marital prospects for the next 12 months? Is anyone strong? Am I, is anyone strongly considering me to be their wife in the next 12 months, 12 to 24 months? And if the answer comes back, no, then what are you going to do? Fight for it alone. We're heading into the next round of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of, of the Corona. This is going to be an epic cuffing season. And here's the thing. If you had an entire year to plan for the pandemic and you still ain't got a Panda Bay or Panda Boo, whoo, what that say about you? So, all right. Appreciate everybody joining in. Appreciate everybody coming to the show. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is when I said I was going to do the show. But uh, I I don't know. We may end up going to stay Monday through Friday, just make the show shorter. Um tonight, tomorrow I will be dropping a video on what is high value, since though high value is in everybody's since so many people's titles, which is fine. Which is fine. Um but for the men I will say this understand high value has a lot to do with business. And if you really don't have a good business mind, if you really don't understand business, it's going to be hard to wrap your head around high value uh, from more than just a money standpoint. And all that means is you got homework to do. You got homework to do. If y'all think Lizzo is pretty, well, I think, uh, uh, no, she's not pretty to me. I mean, I think when women are talking about her pretty, they're talking about her face. And um, let me see. Let me pull up a picture of Lizzo, uh, to be fair. Let me pull up a picture of her face. Um, Lizzo. American singer Lizzo. Image. Uh... Um, I mean, even if adjusted for, I mean, her face is symmetrical, but she's got good bone structure. She's cute. She's not pretty. She's cute. I mean, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the uh, Fibonacci equation of her. I'm looking at basically the symmetry of her face taken from a point and spiraling out. Um, I'd have to also see no makeup. No makeup, Lizzo. Okay. All right. Let's, let's be fair about it. Um, Let's be fair about it. Okay. You know, I do this in real life, so I'm not a, I'm not going to just sit around and just say what's popular. Okay. So here's her face. Uh, yeah. That's her face. Okay. She has really nice skin. She's very clear skin. 
She has nice eyes. You know, her lips are nice. Overall, nice facial symmetry. See, it maps well. Uh, the through line. See if I can draw the through line. I mean, this eye appears to be, you know, yeah, she's cute. Now, if she were to lose weight, her cheekbones, her jawbones, her cheekbones would be more pronounced. Okay. Yeah, but the fullness of her face works against her, man. It really does. I mean, it's just not what men have have classically looked at as attractive. She, she's far more. She's built far more like Big Mama. Um, women who are usually her size are associated with, you know, back in the you know early nineteen, early twentieth century. If she were being cast in movies, she would have been cast for like a domestic. Um, I mean, it's very hard to get a a star's picture. Um. Yeah, but no thank you. No, no. Now here is a problem. Okay. Now we start to get to the problem areas. Okay. I mean, still her skin is clear. She has nice lips, but I'm sorry. The weight is too much of an issue. You cannot overcome this weight. You just cannot overcome the weight as an issue. You can't overcome the weight as an issue. And this is the this is the sad thing. Um, there are even if there are many women in the black community who would have been in decades past would have been married. But that fitness component heavily affects men's perceptions. And it it upsets women to no end, but men are visual like you care about resources. No amount of men being a what what would a man have to look like for you to be all right with him being homeless how 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 attractive would a man have to be for you to be willing to pay 100% of his bills for the rest of his life and you got to work you're not independently wealthy you got to work this is how men look at beauty I mean, dude, she, I mean, I can't say that she's not cute. Lizzo is not ugly, guys. Her body makes it very unattractive. It makes her very unattractive, but her face is not. And see, this is, a, this is something that honestly, um, a lot of average everyday women, a lot of average everyday black women have relied upon. I got a cute face, but it's the rest of you. If a man's hands cannot touch around you, that's a, there's no way in hell I should be doing this with a woman. Now, K- 
Cute versus pretty. Difference a lot. Cute versus pretty. Different. I mean, are you serious? Women who are pretty, beautiful, and gorgeous versus cute? Come on, man. How about this? Instead of asking the difference, how about I want to say this? I, I don't. This is why I don't answer some questions because you're just being disingenuous. One of the worst things we did in this country was remove competition. And high value men are, comp, are, are competitive. And high value ladies, they're competitive too. How many of you ladies out there are actually competitive? For the women who have a problem with the things I say or the things men like me say, are you competitive? Are you competitive for the kind of men you want? And if you're not, there's really nothing else to say about it. It's like saying, I got meatloaf and people came to eat chicken. All right, so uh, let's get up out of here. Let me go read through the Super Chats. Um, I want to play this again. I am the king and will not be... <laughs> I am the king, 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 king